What's up guys, welcome back to the Infamous Project. Extremely hot and sticky day here today. Uh, keeping the lights off, not that it's keeping the temperature down, but just kind of makes things feel cooler, I guess. Uh, you can see I've got the 1991 white Dutch coupe behind me. Uh, I've been driving this car pretty much on the daily and trying to tie up some loose ends and getting it back to um, the way that I remember it and getting it back to even better than I remember it. So I got the hood open here. Um, gonna do some diagnostics and uh, run some things over with you guys. Um, long story short, the car just doesn't seem to be running 100%. So I wanna pull the code, see what's going on, and um, you know, share with you guys kind of the steps and what you can do with your Fox and OBD1, um, how you can uh, test and read the codes with a test light, and um, just stuff you got laying around the house really, and uh, be able to troubleshoot and go from there. So um, let's get to it, check these codes and um, see what we got. So I'm gonna pull the codes. If you guys haven't done this, it is super easy. Um, there's lots of videos on YouTube about it. So it's not like I'm really gonna do anything different. Um, other than just follow the process, I'll run the codes with the car off and with the car on. And uh, we'll just dig down here. Look at this, it's like never been apart. Well, that's awesome. There we go. All right guys, so what we need are these two wires here. You do not want the uh, black and orange wire that goes to your hood light. If you uh, use that one instead by accident, um, you're going to be um, fixing your uh, computer. Can't forget your pen and paper, very important part. So you can see I got a custom little jumper cable here with two spades on it. When you're looking at the plug, the bottom left of the V is where you wanna put uh, one side, the other side you put in this guy. And I'm gonna do it with a test light. So my test light is gonna go right here. You can see it is on. So now we're gonna uh, turn the ignition on and we're going to uh, count flashes. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Seven. All right guys, so with the engine off, it looks like I only have code 67. Now I'm gonna start the car and do the same thing. All right guys, so we got those codes. I'm trying to see what's going on here with this uh, mass airflow sensor. Um, so it looks like we got a PMAS here that has been calibrated um, specific to the car. Um, I know that the, um, the guy that I had sold the car to said that um, he had a tune done on it 
and uh, I'm assuming they've calibrated stuff through the MAF, maybe for the Cobra intakes and the 65 mil um, throttle body. I believe it's a 65. Yes, yes it is. So um, pulled up code 66, which means no signal from the MAF. So i uh, gonna take a look, maybe clean it up, see if uh, we can uh, get it to read something. Even if I have to slap another MAF in there, then we can try that and uh, see what we got. All right, guys, so we got this weird connector here. Um, it's going into this one. For whatever reason, I don't even know how this clip works. I'm just gonna take the mass air meter off. Okay, so everything in here seems to look good. Looks nice and clean. So I'm not sure why we're not getting a reading. All right, so I've got this other Pro-M. So I'm gonna try plugging this guy in and let's see if it's giving us the, uh, the same air. bunch more codes and um, we didn't get code 66 which means this math is reading and um, I really don't know what to think about this math because it says it's calibrated for 75 millimeter throttle body it was on a car that had a 65 millimeter throttle body so did they write down the wrong number on the math or um, did it get calibrated wrong who knows I am gonna go ahead and plug in the old one real quick now um, because I just want to make extra sure that, um, the old one is dead. So you never know, right? Maybe the connector was bad. Maybe I had to wiggle something, but let's go ahead and see. All right, guys. So that's a little strange, right? Um, unplug the, uh, the original math, put a different one in, everything works, put the old one back in, everything's still working. Um, all I've really done is kind of move things around. Maybe bad connection, uh, maybe some water got in there. Um, I'll double check all the connectors, make sure everything is looking good. Obviously I want to leave the one that was tuned to the car installed, but um, we'll keep our eye on it and see how the car continues to run. If my idle keeps surging, that would probably explain a lot if the math wasn't being recognized because then the computer is trying to compensate for not knowing how much airflow is going in there and trying to manage all of the fuel um, and the injectors and everything else. So now let's go ahead and look up the remaining codes. And um, we'll see what we got going on here. So you can see there's a nice list. I'll put the link to uh, Fox Dang's uh, website here. And um, that way you guys can go through it. And it tells you uh, whether you get these codes with the engine off, with whether it's running or under all conditions. So the one with the engine off, you can see my little list of codes down here was 67. 67 is um, neutral drive switch or circuit. So um, you get that one if your foot isn't on the clutch pedal. Um, and uh, it's pretty much your neutral safety switch uh, for that matter. So that's no big deal. Um, the first time we did the run test, we got 98, which is repeat test sequence. And um, then it was giving us code 66. And like I said before, code 66 is um, no mass airflow signal. So we went ahead and changed the maths, and then we ran our tests again, where we got code 21, coolant temperature out of specified range. So uh, maybe our coolant temp sensor or something, but that only came on um, the first time. It didn't come on the second time with the original mass air meter plugged in. So 
That one's kind of interesting. Then we got 41, which is oxygen sensor signal. And then, um, so O2s, they can cause issues, right? Code 91, oxygen sensor problem, fuel pressure out of specified range or injectors out of balance. Um, that would explain a lot um, with my idle issues and everything else. Then we have code 33. Canister or EGR valve not operating properly. So the reality is I kind of got some shitty codes because um, if you could imagine my O2 sensors or my signal, EGR, um, coolant temp sensor, these are all things that really mess with um, how your car operates. So, um, you know what I mean? Dumping fuel in, not enough fuel. This would probably um, explain a lot of my erratic idling behavior. Um, the car was bucking a little bit when it got um, a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna definitely have to go through and check a few things. So we have failed signal again. Now, I'm looking down here, it looks like somebody has spliced the mass air connection and I recently had this issue where one of the connectors slipped out and would you look at that? There's our problem. So we'll go ahead, make sure all these guys are good. Man, I can't even make this stuff up. So I bet you when I had the connector off, this was just barely making contact. And I also have a feeling that um, without the mass air meter, it could potentially be throwing the O2 sensor and all those other codes that we were getting. Uh, let's uh, hope we're fortunate enough for that. Um, otherwise we could have been running really rich all this time and blown out an O2 sensor, but let's get this fixed up and I can put the, uh, the proper mass air meter on here and hopefully we're good to go. I'll definitely be sure to update you on um, the findings and what happens with um, the Dutch coupe here. And um, there's lots more to come. I'm also going to be swapping out some suspension on this car, which I have laying on the ground right over there. I've recently swapped some seats and everything else, but uh, we'll keep that for another episode. So thanks for following along. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you for all your support all your feedback, everything else that keeps me going. And don't forget, I got a whole array of infamous projects, swag, t-shirts, hoodies, hats, everything else available on my website, theinfamousproject.com. We'll see you guys next time.